The main character in the film, Garifuna in Peril, is Ricardo, who is a Garifuna language teacher. He is teaching a class in Los Angeles. He has a son named Elijah, who actually doesn't speak Garifuna. He doesn't really see the need, um, but he is interested in acting, and he gets involved in a theater play that is in the Garifuna language. That theater play is, um, is written and directed by uh, a character named Hillbuck, who's played by Bill Flores, who is the actual writer of the play within the movie. Ricardo's wife, Becky, um, has a very important role because she is a supportive spouse to what Ricardo is doing and um, she is supportive to what her children are doing. Um, at one point in the film she says uh, something to the effect of kids should learn three languages. Um, that's what should be taught in school. Um, the two, um, Elijah's brother is named Jimmy. He's a um, a smaller role in the film, but it sets up another brother dynam brotherly dynamic in the film that um, Jimmy is actually um, a kid who tried out for the play, but he didn't get the part, but he still supports his brother in, uh, in acting in the play. Ricardo's daughter, Helena, is a young lady who is going off to college. She is just getting into a relationship with a new boy. She takes the initiative to really have a discussion with him about uh, HIV. And um, it's brought forward, you know, um, her... She has a discussion with him about, um, you know, he has to get tested for HIV or else they can't have any intimate relationship. And it's, it's shown that she's very strong and... and um, taking care of herself in that sense. Ricardo's brother Miguel is a character in Honduras. Ricardo and Miguel try to set up a business together, a tourist business, and it goes well for a while, except Miguel meets another character named Vera, who is from a resort nearby, and Vera kind of manipulates him into um, abandoning the business with Ricardo to um, detrimental effect. There are a couple of musicians in the film. The first one is Gabriel, played by Luisito Martinez. He is a young man aspiring to be a musician. In the film, he, uh, he meets up with uh, the character of Clifford, played by Bootsy Rankin. Uh, he is sort of auditioning to be in Bootsy's band. So we have a little bit of, um, uh, show a little bit of uh, Garfuna music in this film. There is an Englishman in the film named Richard, who is the owner of the resort. And Richard and Ricardo uh, sort of have a confrontation near the end of the film. That is a discussion about tourism and economy and Garfuna pride, actually. So these are all characters that um, are coming from different, different uh, perspectives and different angles. So it, this film has a lot of different... Um, one of my favorite things about the film is that there is a very interesting mix of characters. You have not just Garfinna characters, but Latino characters and a, and a white character. And, you know, it's, it's got a little bit of something from all perspectives, and that's... Something that we maybe didn't really set out to do. Our goal was to make a film only in Garfuna language that dealt with things in the community. The film started having more and more English in it as these characters began interacting with people outside the community. So it slipped so that it's not 90% Garfuna as we originally intended. It's more like 55 or 60% Garfuna. But I'm actually very happy with the way it is because it really it brings in uh, English and Spanish into the mix, and that I think it's it's more appealing to other audiences that way that people see that there's characters that do speak these other languages, and Ricardo actually speaks 
all three languages, English, Spanish, and Garifuna. And it really, he's really an example of, uh, of what he's all about. He's trying to build a trilingual school, and he speaks three languages. One really interesting character is the character of Yanisi, who is sort of the person that kind of tips the scale or plants the seed for everything that happens after that. She's an entrepreneur that is selling vacations, and she tries to sell Ricardo a vacation. And that puts the idea in his head, huh, this is a business that maybe, maybe I could do, or maybe we could do for our people. Instead of letting um, foreigners run the tourism business in Honduras, maybe we could do our own thing. So she is somebody that's a very pushy and very, uh, very uh, strong-willed, and is, it's a very comical character. But at the same time, it demonstrates an entrepreneurship and someone who really um, is strong and knowing what they want and knowing what they're doing. And um, so she's an interesting character in that respect. I can't say whether filming in Los Angeles or Honduras, what, which one was easier. They both had different challenges. Uh, Los Angeles is difficult because we, we still got to work our day job on top of everything. So we're, we're juggling a lot of elements of life at the same time. And we can only shoot on Saturdays or Sundays. You know, everybody has their life, you know. And, and people make sacrifices, but you know, people can't always take off work or whatever, or things come up. So there's, a, there's logistical issues uh, with shooting in Los Angeles. Honduras is somewhat easier in that regard because we're there and we're not working. We're just there to make a film and we can shoot on any day. But then there's communication difficulties. Not everybody has a phone. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get to different places. Um, so there's, there's different challenges. Um, I, I would say the challenges are probably about equal if you really lay it out. This film is an independent production in every sense of the word. You know, um, independent film is thrown around or, or that label is used for a lot of different films. You know, um, even big time celebrities like Clint Eastwood, he calls himself an independent filmmaker, you know. Um, but I think at the true essence of it, to me, independent filmmaking is someone who is really not getting their money from the industry and, and not working full time in the industry and really, you know, struggling to make it happen um, and probably working another job at the same time. That's, that's something that's independent, that you're not really answering to anyone. We didn't, we didn't have anybody to answer to. We filmed, we, uh, we funded this ourselves. We probably had about... We had about 11 investors, mostly Garifuna people, actually. Um, but we didn't have any big corporation to answer to. We are two people that just wanted to get a film done. I'm a cinematographer, so I have a camera and I have some lights. So I know I go to my closet, get the camera and get those lights and show up. We can make a film. If I'm pressing record on the camera, something will get on, will get recorded. And Ruben brings his people, he has the script, he has it translated into Garifuna, he coaches people on the, on the Garifuna language, and with those two elements brought together, we can make something happen. And that's kind of our, been our attitude all along, is that if we can just get the people in the same place at the same time and there's a camera there, something will happen. And we shot a lot of footage, a lot of scenes that we didn't use in the, in the movie, actually. You know, there's, um, sometimes you just, you just shoot and shoot and shoot until, until you get something, you know. And um, we, try to, we try to respect people's time by scheduling it professionally so that, you know, an actor may have, you know, three days and we get all of their scenes done in, in those three days. We try to be as professional as possible but also uh, having some flexibility that we know some people work and um, you know a couple times people couldn't make it at the last minute and so I'm there with the equipment and everything and nothing happened. I mean a, a number of times we're all set to go and nothing happens. But that comes with the territory. I knew that going in. I, I figured that going in. That's just the level that we're working at and that's going to happen sometimes. So we basically work with what we have. 
you know, we we have a a unique skill. We both, Ruben and I, have a unique skill set that we bring to the table, and it's that combination that made this happen. And we know that we we have a very unique combination. That's why we're pushing forward to keep to keep this going, um, because he. Ruben has uh, a very unique position in his knowledge of the language and the experience that he has. I have a unique position in that I'm, I'm very hands-on technically. I, I, I can make it happen without much of a crew. I can, I can shoot things myself. I have the camera, I have the sound recorder mounted on the camera, and a lot of times I can shoot it by myself if I have to. Um, so we, by keeping it simple, that helps with the flexibility of it. What the audience can expect when they go and see this film is, I have to say, they're going to see something they haven't seen before, in a lot of ways. They're going to see <laughs> this event unfolding on a big screen where people are speaking in Garfuna, and a lot of people haven't seen that before on a big screen. Um, they're going to see actors who are realistic, realistic characters in real situations. And all of the people acting in this film, I say almost all of the people, are acting for the first time. And the way we approach this, we film in a certain way that allows them to really be themselves. And we don't, we don't Sometimes we just kind of roll the camera for a really long time and, and let them let them act and, and let them speak and let them be who they are. And so the performances in this film are very realistic. It's, it's very naturalistic. And um, there's a lot of authenticity in that. So you're going to see people that you're going to wonder, are they even acting? You know, it might come to your, cross your mind. Is this, is this real? Is this a documentary? Or is this, are they acting? What's going on here? You know? This film kind of plays with that line. There's some scenes that kind of feel documentary, the way it's covered, and then other scenes that it's very dramatic. So you're going you're gonna to see a mix of that. And um, that really, I, I think, kind of helps the thesis of the film because this is, this is a drama, but it's actually about something that's very real, and it's shot in a very realistic way. What's next for us? Well, we have several other films uh, in the pipeline. First of all, Garfuna and Peril is actually designed as the first film in a trilogy of films. So there is actually a sequel, and maybe even a sequel to that sequel. <laughs> um, so those are in the works. We want to do something about um, Punta Rock musicians. We want to do something that involves a Garfuna superhero. We want to do something that involves a, um, a historical epic. Um, these are just a few of the ideas that we're working on. But the, the whole point of what we're doing is to really build some momentum that we don't want to just make one film and get it out there and that's it. We're trying to build momentum and hopefully get some other people involved in this momentum. You know, this, this process is really to inspire other filmmakers as well to get on board and see, well, okay, th those guys did it, uh, maybe I can do it, you know? And we've tried to kind of be open with our knowledge and, and, and share um, about how we did this and that maybe it's not quite as complicated as, as people might think. It's not, it, maybe it doesn't take as much money to make a film as, as some people think. It's always going to be a struggle, it's always going to be a sacrifice, but it's amazing what you can do which is kind of sheer willpower and, and a really uh, sharp focus on what you really want to say. You can do it. You can do it without a lot of money if you really want to. And, and that's what we're here for, to tr try to inspire that and, and say, hey, look what we did without a lot of resources. So we invite anyone who really wants to, to learn what we're doing and how we did it, always feel free to contact us. And we want to support other Garifuna filmmaking. Uh, into the future. This is not just about us, it's about starting a movement uh, and a new Garfuna cinema, if you will.